According to a UC Berkeley study, Cleveland is the sixth most segregated major city in the country, with most people of color living in east side neighborhoods facing extreme disadvantages. It was in Mount Pleasant, it was Pierce St. Clair, it was Glenville, it was uh, the Kinsman neighborhood, uh, Lee Harvard. Visit any one of those Cleveland neighborhoods and you'll see remnants of what used to be years of decay, blight. It's the result of a practice rooted in racism called redlining. Redlining was a systemic denial of services that began in the 1930s, primarily affecting people of color. They were denied access to credit and insurance, and businesses refused to invest in those neighborhoods that were shaded on maps. The neighborhoods were outlined in red, meaning that they were the highest risk. That's where we get the term redlining from, or redlined. Um, and those neighborhoods were much more often um, predominantly African-American. Look at the roadblocks put in place that prevented people of color from owning a home and gaining the wealth that they otherwise should have been able to gain just as their white counterparts did. Jim Rokakis is the former treasurer of Cuyahoga County. Even though redlining was outlawed more than 50 years ago, he watched as neighborhoods affected by redlining were again victimized during the Great Recession through subprime lending. If you look and see where redlining occurred in Cleveland and you look and see who was most damaged by the foreclosure crisis, they are the same neighborhoods. And if you look to see where the recovery has been today, the weakest recovery is in those very same neighborhoods that were redlined. Redlining not only robbed blacks of home ownership, its lasting impact is felt in other areas. Dangerous lead levels in homes, lack of reliable internet access, even health care disparities. Things like asthma, um, maternal death after birth, um, certain types of cancers are actually much higher uh, in historically redlined neighborhoods. Gwen Donnelly, a pre-doctoral candidate at Case Western Reserve University, has studied the issues. This is one of the most clearly intentional um, cases of discriminatory housing policy um, that we can see ever. They've saved in their notes, this neighborhood is mostly black, therefore we are redlining it. And fixing the problems it created won't be easy, although progress is being made. Neighborhood development corporations are investing in affordable housing options as land banks work to tear down vacant properties. If you live on a street where there are four or five vacant houses and there's no chance of anybody coming back, the best solution, as brutal as it seems, is to remove that property and to start over. It's no easy task, but a necessary one, since experts say blight often spreads, as inner ring suburbs are starting to see, which is why raising awareness and eliminating discriminatory practices are so important. You can't keep saying it's not my problem, it's their problem. And so education is an important first step, I would say, for anybody who's working um, with public policy, our local council people, our mayor, it's important for everybody to be aware of this. In Cleveland, I'm Brandon Simmons, 3 News.